What's up guys, Dark Dally here playing Ghost Recon Wildlands and today we want to do the initial test of the Honey Badger. Rum, my friend Rum here and I, we both got up at, well, 3 a.m. my time, uh, 5 a.m. his time. <laughs> as soon as the challenge launched, we got up, we did the challenge, the last challenge of the month and got the Honey Badger. Now before we start, now, okay, so today we are testing the Honey Badger. We're going to test it, we're going to compare it against various other SMGs because it does count as an SMG. We're going to test it in various ways, we're going to do all kinds of things. But first, I want to answer the question, how do you get the Honey Badger? Let me go ahead and go to my challenges screen here, and I'm going to show you. Let's start with this, because I know this is going to be a question that's asked. Over the last four weeks, there's been a total of 12 solo challenges. Notice there's only three rewards up there, but there's 12 bubbles. Every week, there's been three solo challenges. Every one of the last four weeks, there's been three solo challenges. So if you haven't done all the challenges, no, you cannot get the Honey Badger. That said, I'm sure that uh, um, Rum, your your mic's making some buzzing noises. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Rum is here with me. Uh, so no, you can't get it. But I'm sure Ubisoft will make it available in the future to be purchased. They have done so with every challenge reward in the past. So don't worry. If you miss some of these challenges in the past month, because I know a lot of people. And here's the problem: a lot of a lot of kids got Ghost Recon Wildlands for Christmas. And they got in too late to do the challenges. So I think that was kind of poor timing on Ubisoft's part, but you know, whatever. A lot of people got the game for Christmas and it was already too late to do week one challenges. That was really poor timing on their part. They should have really thought of that. That said, don't worry. This weapon will be available in the future, I'm sure, for purchase. For now, let's have a look at the Honey Badger and then we're going to test it. Uh, he and I, we're going to test it with Bullet Drop. We're going to test it with damage and uh, everything else. Where, where's my friend? Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. There we go. We have matching outfits as well. Yeah, we have the whole Stormtrooper uh, uh, outfit motif thing going on here. All right, so let's have a look at the Honey Badger. Let's have a Hold look on. at it in the menu. Carl showed up. All right, so... Okay, so a little a little history about the Honey Badger. The Honey Badger, I'm actually not sure who makes it in real life. What it is, is basically it's a short-barreled M4 with an integral suppressor that fires 300 blackout. Now, in real life, it's classified as a PDW, but here's the thing. The rounds it fires, 300 blackout, which is about the size of an AK round. Let's go check. I, I think it's a, almost the same size. It's, um, so yeah, 7.62 by 35. So we're talking about the size of an AK round. Now, this classifies as a PDW. Now, when you compare this to the other PDWs in the game, such as the P90, the SR635, and the uh, MP7, not even close. This fires real full-size rifle rounds out of a small package that's integrally suppressed. Sorry, guys. I have problems saying that word, integrally. <laughs> you can see here, this is a standard M4 platform. You can see it has, even though it has a, a collapsible stock, it still has the standard buffer tube and everything. It just has a really short barrel and an integral suppressor. Let's have a look at the customization options. Let's have a look at everything that makes the Honey Badger the Honey Badger. Let's have a look at the customizable parts. This thing is extremely, totally, completely customizable. All right, so we actually have two options for buttstock. We can have it extended or folded. We have the full range of optics for it. Well, uh, let's see, what do we have under trigger? Just full auto or semi. Under magazine, we can actually put a 50 round like GI mag in it. That's cool. For an SMG in this game, that's cool. There are SMGs, you know, or I should say, uh, yeah, there's a couple SMGs slash PDWs in this game. In this game, of course, they classify PDWs along with SMGs. It's a shame, but they classify them the same. Of course, the P90 holds a large magazine. I want to say 50 or so rounds. But this is cool because this is the only standard, uh, you know, format magazine-fed SMG that lets you put a full... This is this is like a 50 round mag out of an M4. You can just stuff it in there. I mean, so long as it's chambered for 500 or oh, sorry, 300 block out. Let's move on. And sorry, I'm really excited about this. I have it outfitted with the shift short angled grip. That's always the grip you want to use on an SMG in this game. I had the laser sight just because. And then what do we have under barrel? Okay, so we only have one barrel choice. And then in suppressor, we actually can't change that. Now, one person on my Discord actually complained and I actually can't believe this. So this is a shout out to the one person on my Discord who got really salty over this weapon and complaining you can't change the muzzle. Well, it's integrally suppressed. So of course you can't change the muzzle. It's built into the weapon. So there's that. 
Um, so you're, it, it's only suppressed. It's built into the weapon. It's just like if you had a um, a VSS Venturez. Class seven blacklist. Oh, I was going to say a VSS Venturez is well, yeah. it, which is a rifle. Which it, it, the VSS Venturez is a nine by thirty nine sniper rifle with that's, which is integrally suppressed. Also in this game. Um, the 5.7 Blacklist, uh, I don't know if that exists in real life. The Maxim 9 is integrally suppressed, which in this game exists as the Whisper Pistol. That's the Maxim 9. It's integrally suppressed. You can't remove the suppressor because it's part of the weapon. So there's that. So you can't change the muzzle device, but that I don't see that as a big deal. So this is how we're going to be testing this guy. It's okay. We're going to test bullet drop first. And I don't usually do SMG bullet drop, but we're going to do it today. Now, the things that affect bullet drop are barrel length and range finders, but this being an SMG, we can't do either. That said, this has the full range of SMG customizable options. It's just we can't do, you know, some of the stuff we would normally do. We're going to test this. I don't usually do SMG bullet drop. Let's do it at 200 meters. Now, I want to compare this against, I have a feeling this is going to compare with the MP7. I just have a feeling. I have a feeling this is going to compare with the MP7. And though this fires a full-size rifle round out of a very compact package, I have a feeling that Ubisoft, in their lack of knowledge of guns, is going to just have it, they're just going to clone the stats from the NP7 or the SR635. We shall find out. I want to be surprised. I really want to be surprised. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a shot at 200 meters, and let's see how it fares in bullet drop, and then we're going to switch... To, we're going to do some uh, combat effectiveness, as they call it. I'll probably have myself and Rom do it. So if I go 200 meters, you can see right there on the wall where it hit. Let's go ahead and recon that shot. I'll show you guys where it hit. So you can see it hit right at the top, very top of that brick right there. At 200 meters, you can expect that. Kind of, yep, exactly. Right there, right, right where he pointed. You can expect that kind of bullet drop from the Honey Badger at 200 meters. I think this is going to compare with the MP7. I really do. I want to hurry this video along. I don't want to, you know, waste your guys' time. So here's what we're going to do. Oops, sorry about that. Let's go ahead and equip an MP7, and we're going to equip it the exact same way. Well, best we can. We actually can't put the exact same parts on it, so we're going to do the best we can. Extended butt, Scott, uh, butt stock. Sorry. We're going to use the Comp M4. That's kind of the scope I've been using. Uh, when it comes to scopes, I say use whatever feels comfortable. Magazine is going to have no effect on this. We're going to have a foregrip in place of the uh, angled grip because that's all we can do. We're going to go ahead and put a laser sight on it. That won't, that won't affect this. We are going to put a standard barrel because this had a standard barrel. No, no, wait, wait. I get too many complaints about that. We're going to give this the best parts it can get. I have too many complaints from people saying you should give every weapon the best chance it can get. Since the MP7 can equip a long barrel, we'll put a long barrel on it because that's going to affect this. Other than that, it's the same. All right, so let's go ahead and let's take a shot. With the MP7, same distance, 200 meters. It hit higher. Mm. It hit higher, I bet. I bet if I took the long barrel off, though, well, let's go ahead and... Um, uh, Rum, could you mark that? Make it easier for them, for the viewers. It hit right at the top of that brick. Yep, it hit right there. So they hit exactly one brick apart. I will bet you guys 500 intranets that if I go to the MP7... And let's go ahead and swap this barrel out, put a standard barrel on it. It will hit in the exact same place. Okay, so that said, well, it is what it is. You know, I, I do these tests live so you can see the results. Yep, as they happen. Yep, exactly beside it. I saw it from here. I know you guys couldn't see it. I'm going to zoom in for you guys. You can see right there. Just yep, underneath. they hit. That's within the margin of error. Yeah, that, that is within yeah. the margin of error. They hit in the exact same place. So, so far, bullet drop wise, it's comparable. It's the exact same as an MP7 with the same parts. I what I can't compare this with an assault, with an assault rifle. I know people want to say, compare it with the M4 because the Honey Badger basically is an M4. But this is a video game and in this game, Assault rifles and SMGs are in simply completely different classes. Rum, what's your thoughts so far? You have it too. Rum and I both just got the Honey Badger, and I'll have that video coming up here soon. I'll have the video of us doing all the challenges and a guide um, to them. So far, I've only done a damage test on my own. I mean, it shoots about three shots for a kill. I mean, I think the penetration was fine. 
uh, was doing an old car and all with this and shot a guy through the wall. So it'll shoot. Hmm. All right, so we clearly have a few tests to do with the Honey Badger. So we've done the bullet drop, and here's what we've seen. It has the same bullet drop as an MP7 with a comparable length barrel. So, so far right there, they're the same. Let's travel out to Kwani Bravo, where we usually do, where we always do the combat effectiveness. What we do here is we stop a convoy, which the convoy is coming up right now as it happens. This is perfect timing. The convoy looks about two and a half clicks out uh, from what I just saw on the map. So we're going to have just enough time to get set up. Uh, Rum's going to snipe the chopper, stop the convoy, and he's not going to assist me. What I'm going to do is we're going to stop the convoy about 200 meters out, and I'm going to take it out with the Honey Badger, and then we're going to take it out with MP7 and see which does better. One reason I'm comparing it with the MP7 is not only because I think they'll perform the same, but because the MP7 is one of the very best SMGs in the game. One great thing is... Here's the great thing about SMGs in this game. They have a naturally higher rate of fire than assault rifles. The convoy's coming up, man. Let me uh, let me get up here and set a point for it. SMGs have a naturally higher rate of fire and naturally faster reload. And this thing can take a 50-round magazine. Few other SMGs, in fact, only the PP-19 and the P-90 can take magazines near that size. So first up is the Honey Badger. Let's see how it does. Definitely stop it about 100 meters closer to me. Because we're talking about an SMG here, I can't expect it to shoot that far. I usually test assault rifles between three and 400 meters. That's good. Oh, oh, he's got it. He's got the EMP already. Okay. All right, so here we go. Honey Badger, let's see how well it does. We're at 231 meters. Let's see how much bullet drop. Uh, probably about here. Yep, dead on. That looked like about four shots. The other guys haven't gotten out of the vehicles uh. just yet. Yeah, there's always variables. Yeah, there's always variables here. About four shots. I'm on single shot, by the way, guys. That's about four shots. I'm doing this single shot. Wow, that was like three shots. I got to say, an SMG at over 200 meters killing an enemy in three shots is pretty good. We're going to test recoil as well. God damn. Uh, guys, uh, oh, I'm getting spot. Oh, we got, we got, uh, guys running up on us. That was, yeah. That doesn't usually happen. Wow. Look at that. Oh. Ah, I'm missing like horrible crazy. Hmm. That guy seemed to take a few more shots, but I did miss a lot. Let's go ahead and we're going to swap this to full auto. We're going to run up. And take this last guy out. Now, this thing has been crazy effective. The reason they ran up on us is because we took the convoy closer than usual. Usually, I take this convoy at about 400 or so meters. When you get towards the 200 meter range, they're more likely to run up and engage you. But that's okay. We know they're alert. Whoa, that guy wasn't even marked. Oh, shit. I had to reload. Oh. Bad timing on the reload. Another general standby. Nah, I'm good. I'm alive. This guy's running from me. He's running. Yeah, I see him. Alright, so... This thing proved pretty effective. You know what, guys? While we're waiting for the convoy, let's do a quick recoil test. Now, these weapons are not set up for optimal recoil. Actually, they pretty much are. We can't change the muzzle device on the Honey Badger. Aside from that, they're both pretty much already set up for optimal recoil. Or at least they're set up the same. Let's see how they perform in recoil while we wait for this convoy. So we're just going to stand right here. I'm just going to fire one 30-round uh, burst from each gun. So let me go ahead and take my Honey Badger and swap it down to a 30-round magazine. Yeah, it takes a 50-round. That's a big bonus. I mean, that's a huge bonus. All right, so we're running 30 rounds in both of these. Let's go ahead and see how they each do. First up is the MP7 on full auto, one full mag. Now, SMGs are going to tend to zigzag a bit more. And if I have multiple videos showing the why of that, why they fire more zigzaggy than straight up and down. Let's try the Honey Badger. Pretty much the same. There is, there is room for error there. 
the MP7 feels like it might fire a little bit faster. I can explain another time if you haven't seen my previous videos. I'll have a link, if I can find the video, I'll have a link in the description below as to why SMGs in this game fire zigzaggy. All right, so it does look like the Honey Badger has a bit, perhaps, slower rate of fire and a bit more recoil. So there is that to take into consideration. But recoil, like a bullet drop, is just something that you adjust for. We're gonna try to take the climb away at the same spot. This time we're using the MP7 with the exact same parts. We got a bit of uh, carnage happening there with the cars. We're gonna wait for Rum to. Shit, I messed up. It happens. I had heal on. Oh, I'm getting lag like crazy bad. Well, it stopped nonetheless. Hey, this test is not without variables. I never deny that. This thing definitely does fire faster than the Honey Badger. Same reload time. Let's see if we can keep these guys suppressed. That's one advantage of the SMG. It's easy to keep enemies suppressed. This is, people are gonna say this is not a fair test and you're right. This test is under different circumstances. <laughs> truck just ran over that guy. Oh, we got him out of the truck, though. Nice job. Again, Rum is not assisting me in any way. The only thing he's assisting me is in stopping the convoy. He's not helping me shoot these guys. Okay, the Honey Badger clearly does far more damage. Even though they show the same damage, It's it did more damage at 300 meters than this gun is doing at 100 meters. Not even 100. We're at 20 meters away. 120, sorry. Oh, shit, they're shooting me. So a little suppress them. Ah. Oof, good, 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 good. Let's see what we can get done here. Both of these guns will shoot through... Uh, oh, we ran out of ammo. Well, that's unexpected. Let me get more ammo. Again, that's why I call this combat effectiveness. There's always variables. We ran out of ammo. Honey Badger, more effective. More damage, more effective. That's the driver. We're not going to worry about him. We're going to worry about the guys shooting at us. Notice we can shoot this guy through the car, but we could too with the honey badger. Oh, but that, there's our threat right there. Yep, honey badger's better. Does more damage. They show the same damage on the damage bars, but that's clearly not accurate. Okay, so... Oh, shit, I'm gonna die. No, I'm not. Got it. All right, so... Thanks for the med drone, though, by the way, bro. Um, we're going to have, we're going to have Rum run this test. He's a better player than I am. And, uh, but here's what I'm seeing guys. The honey badger was far more effective. It did way more damage per shot. This fires faster, but it fires slower and does more damage. I had more problems with, uh, the zigzag, you know, the zigzag kind of recoil that, uh, SMGs tend to do. I had more problems with that, with the MP7 than I had with the honey badger. The Honey Badger, I think, might just be worthwhile of the challenges. Rum and I are going to reset the game, and we're going to have him do it. Run with the Honey Badger and see what he thinks. I'm going to take the chopper. Don't worry about that. Chopper's down. I'm in camera mode, just kind of observing. Kind of our truck's moving, I'll stop it. Again, there's always variables that happen. Okay, the convoy truck has stopped. We're gonna let Rum take it from here. That's why, we, that's why we call this combat effectiveness. Uh, here, I'm going to run in with my honey badger and avenge his death. And avenge his death with the honey badger. It happens, guys. 
Uh, combat effectiveness. That's why I call it this. There's always variables. Wow, this thing kills cars crazy fast. It's going to kill that guy, so I'm going to res you. Yeah, we're, we're clear. We're done. All right. Okay, Rome, what's your impression? I, I know that was a weird situation, but it happens. What's your impression on, on the... Um, uh, I'd go with the Honey Badger just because it's more powerful. The Honey Badger is more powerful than the MP7, that's for sure. But both of our findings show the Honey Badger to be more effective in combat. Like right there... Okay, unexpected things always happen when I take this convoy, and people always suggest to me uh, more effective ways to do this. But I think this is an effective way to test a weapon because combat is never predictable. And to me, the Honey Badger just felt more effective. And right there, when um, Rum went down, I was able to defend his position and then raise him with the Honey Badger. Now, could I have done that with the MP7? Perhaps, but I instinctively switched to, to the honey badger to do it. Now, was that just prejudice? Is that, you know, whatever? Is that expectation? I don't know. So my final words on the on the uh, honey badger, expect a little more bullet drop than you would with a max customized MP7 because it can take a long barrel. But aside from that, the reason I'm comparing it to the MP7 again is, is because they're both very similar looking PDWs. Now, what does looks have to do with it? Again, because Ubisoft doesn't know anything about guns. So they take guns that look like one another and they replicate the stats. If you want me to test this against another gun, I'm more than happy to do that and will do so. We will be testing the Honey Badger further. This has been a much talked about weapon ever since it's, uh, you know, ever since they released that it's coming out. Rum Rover, what are your thoughts? Well, what's your overall thoughts on the Honey Badger versus the MP7 and or just the Honey Badger in general? Oh, the honey badger, it's just, mm. yeah, it's going to see some action here soon. Yeah, we've yeah. both been using it. We've used it in the last couple of missions, and we used it in this test today. It's actually hard to call. It's hard to call for me. I, I think because I think I partly want to favor it. Guys, thank you so much for watching. There's more honey badger testing to come up because this is an interesting weapon. Now it doesn't perform like it should in real life because in real life, this fires a 30 caliber bullet. This fires is basically the same size round that an AK-47 fires. So no, this is not performed like it would in real life. But we're talking about a game here. It's classified as an SMG. Thus, we can only compare it against SMGs. We can't compare this against assault rifles. Mm, well, but we could. And we'll see what happens. Guys, tell me what you think in the comments below. Rim Roser, well, yeah. Rim Rover, any closing <laughs> words? <laughs> Rock on. Right. So, guys, we'll be back with more Honey Badger action. Also, all we have some very easy guides on how to do the closing challenges for this month, how to cheese them and make it really easy and get your own Honey Badger. It's a really sick weapon if you run, want to run an SMG. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Dark Deli. This is Rim Rover. We will catch you guys next time.